I'm Liz Larson with The Art of Frosting. And today, I want to show you how to do this Hawaiian theme cake. So we're going to use some airbrush, we're going to use some stencils, and we're going to use lots of borders, and I'm going to show you how to do a plumeria. It's a fun cake. This design comes from the master Larry Powell. So Larry Powell has a book called The Big Book of Cake Decorating. Unfortunately, it's out of print now, and you can only find it in rare books. Roland Winbeckler also has some books that show how to do these multiple designs. But I want to give credit where credit is due. This really isn't my design, it's just an adaptation of one of the old masters. And we have to give our appreciation for him to come in, for coming up with all of this stuff. Also, before we get started, I want to share some amazing news. I heard from our friend Lavender Lavender. Those of you who are, who are on Facebook know Lavender Lavender. She's an amazing decorator. She sent me a photo from Baghdad. I'll show you the picture here. This is her cake that she designed for a festival called I Am Woman. It's a festival where women in Baghdad show the things that they're doing to make money, arts and crafts and businesses. It's an amazing thing that's happening there. We all know that they've had some trouble lately and women haven't been honored as they should be. Well, this is an opportunity to really honor those women. And I'm so proud to say that one of our own is a part of it and cake decorating has made an impact there. So thank you so much for sharing that. Lavender, Lavender, appreciate it. Big kiss out to you and all your sisters there in Baghdad. So guys, let's get started. I wanna introduce some of these uh, equipment. So now remember, this stuff has been used for years and years. So it is not spotlessly clean. It gets really stained by our food coloring. So you have to make sure and clean it every time, but it's still gonna get a little stained. This is a single action airbrush. This one happens to be by Copy Cake, but you can get any single action airbrush that has a top feed. And this is just a little compressor. Turn it on and off. This whole setup you can get online for about $130. Just search cake decorating airbrush on Amazon and you'll find hundreds and hundreds of options. But about $130 is what you'd expect for this little setup. I'm gonna be using a liquid airbrush color. Now these are just food coloring. You can actually even use your little um, paste colors if you want and thin them down with water. So these are Chef Master, but you can buy all kinds of different brands of these. You just want to find liquid food coloring. I'm going to be using stencils. So these are old and I sprayed them a little bit so you can get a good idea of what they look like. This is an old technique, but um, and these are old, old stencils. These are probably 30 years old. So you can see they get really stained up with food coloring. But they're basically just a thick plastic. So we're just using some clear plastic stenciling material. This says clear template plastic. That's all it is. So it's a thicker plastic. And for you pros, you want to make your stencils out of plastic. You can use them over and over again, wash them and everything. You just want to put something down and cut it out with a exacto knife. You can get anything you want. You can see here, this stencil is just a couple of palm trees and a couple of thin lines of uh, island. The next thing I'm going to be using here is actually a silk screen. This just keeps my stencils off my cake. You can also work in frozen cake and you don't really need a silk screen. You can also use some thin uh, fabric tool. T-U-L-E. It's just a very fine, fine netting. I'm working on a frozen cake. I just want to show you that even in whip topping, which is what I have here, the stencil won't stick. If it's not frozen and you're working in whip topping, it'll stick. With buttercream, it won't stick, so you can use them without the silk screen. I'm just going to show you with the silk screen so we have an idea. We're going to be working in double stencils. This is the first stencil. You want to start by spraying out your color onto a towel or another surface so you make sure that you have a clean clear color that you want and then we're going to spray right here in the middle and we're starting with yellow. Uh. 
Next we're going to do our pink and we're going to actually blend it in with the yellow so we get our orange. Last, we're going to do our blue. And here's where our second layer of stencil comes in. We just lay our second stencil over the top of the first one and we're going to spray in our black. This stencil is actually set up for half sheet. So we're only going to use two of the islands and I just aligned it with the bottom island. You'll see it when I take it off. You want to keep your airbrush high enough above that you're not spraying your frosting, getting holes in your frosting, but you also want to keep it low enough that you're not spraying black all over the rest of your cake. If it's not dark enough, you want to spray in layers, let it dry a little bit in between. Okay, so let's take off our stencils and see what we ended up with. So our silk screen ended up getting a little messy. Now this is working in uh, whip topping and sometimes you will get this. It was a little wet and we got a little bit here, which is no problem because we're going to cover that in borders. We did get a little bit stuck here where our color is too bright. So I want to show you how to fix it. It's a good opportunity to show you what happens when things don't work out the way you plan. I'm going to add a sun there and turn this into just a little bit of a sunset. And there you go, we've covered that up and we have created just a little bit more interest. I'm going to use the orange that I have and use it to add just a little color to the base. And that's a little more pink than I expected. So I'm coming back in with our standard number 23 star tip. And I want to follow the edge of my stencil around here and I'm just going to use a zigzag design. So it's a lot the same way we used our garlands. So I'm going to dip down here where the stencil dipped down and come back in. Dip down and start to angle sideways here around. So you can see it's just a really simple border and follow it all the way around your cake. So the fun of these are you can put as many layers as you want. I'm going to come back in with a number 104 tip and just make one more layer here. Just garlands. I think you guys have seen me do this a couple of times before. It's a really useful border. You can see I've got this tipped with just a little bit of pink and as I come around it has changed which is okay. So it kind of follows the line of our 
um, gradiating sunset here. Come in back in with my number 23 star tip here and just follow the edge of this inside stencil. Just going to make a little garland around, a little rosette, and even pressure and around. It's a little circle around and a little circle. Okay, since we've got some kind of elaborate borders, I'm going to continue that. I'm going to come up here with a pillar. And then just a little following the line here. I'm going to do that all the way around. Squeeze, let it build. Little rosette. Come back in. Okay, then I'm just going to use a reverse shell here in the center. As I come around this last side, I just want to show you guys on this cake how many borders you can combine and for you pros when you're doing this combine lots of borders it's quick and easy and it keeps you from really getting in a rut and it makes your cake look fairly elaborate. It's time to move on to adding our flowers and we are adding plumeria. We want to decide where the center of our spray is going to be and I think I'm going to put it right here. Now we're going to go over the tops of some of these borders that we put down, which is okay. That's part of the layering effect. First decide the size of the spray. We're going to use a basic C shape here and just start to fill in. Come back up over this side. And let's come back in with our leaves. Using a number 104, we're going to come up flat, make a tip, and come back. You guys have seen me do this before. Rock forward. Now on the leaves, we want to use our method of three. So you're going to start with three here. Come back and put three here. Now you can leave the stem sticking out the top if you want. This adds another little layer of detail. So three and three. Now we want to put our three in the center and these are going to frame our flower. So there's one, here's two, and I want to put a third here close in. Okay, we're going to color stripe for our plumeria. And these are well known for their yellow stripe on the outside. So they're variegated. So I'm just going to bring my yellow and stripe right up the side. This is my yellow paste gel. I'm just striping right up the side. I'm going to add one layer of white. And then you want to come in and blend that in a little bit. So you've got a nice strong layer on the outside and a softer yellow more on the inside. And next I'm going to add the inside layer, which is white. You want to shake it down and then Squeeze it out till you get the colors that you want. You can adjust your tip however you want to get the colors to come out like so. We're going to start with doing just a few little plumeria buds. So just three. Let's come all the way out here and do three. And one more here. So remember our rule of three. Next, we're going to start with our plumeria flower. Now, you want to mark them. I want one here, one here, and one all the way up here. That tells me what size they need to be and also my spacing. So we're going to start with the outer one. A plumeria is a five-petal flower, and this one you want a pinwheel for. So you're going to let your petals stand up, squeeze up, and back, squeeze up, 
let your wrist turn and back. Squeeze up, let your wrist turn and back. There's four and five, like so. We want to be sure to let these petals cup up. Most of the time we're not wanting them to cup up and we don't want them to look like a pinwheel, but plumeria has a pinwheel effect. Okay, so plumeria doesn't have any stamen. So what we need to do is we need to create the little typical hole that happens in plumeria. So we want to take a pointed skewer and wipe it and wipe it with a little bit of yellow and go down in to make the hole. You're also going to get a little bit of that green coming up through, which is okay too. And there you go. You get that typical space in the center of the plumeria. We're just going to come back in and add just a little bit to the base of these two little stripes and there you go so I think I've added enough here I could add more but I think I'm not going to in this case so I showed you lots of borders that we can combine together combining stencils, and then the plumeria flower. This cake is actually really quick. It shouldn't take you more than about 10 minutes if you're skilled with your borders and your flowers. Maybe an hour if you're a little less skilled with your borders and flowers. Of course, you can use the stencil idea. If you don't have an airbrush, just use your icing and blend it together. It works the same way. So I hope you guys give this a try. I can't wait to see what you show me that you've done. So if you wanna share with me, share it on the Art of Frosting on Facebook, or you can look on my blog, www.theartoffrosting.blogspot.com, and there's a whole catalog of my work there too. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you all again soon.